Before we continue, a brief clarification of terms. By the 20th century, scientific and geographic racism had become the lingua franca of global academia. The use of the term Caucasoid or Caucasian did not initially mean a person who was fair-skinned. It was only a poor attempt to classify humankind according to groupings of skull types. In our contemporary day, it is primarily used to label a fair-skinned person of a certain facial appearance. It is interchangeable with the label or term white. The term Negro did not apply to all dark-skinned people, just people who resided in certain geographic locales. Today, it is used loosely for anyone of dark complexion. Although primarily, it is used as an ethnic or racial label for dark-skinned Americans of the 16th to 18th century transatlantic geographic continent to African descent. So keep in mind that the use of the terms Caucasian and Negro in the early and mid-1900s was a confusing, arbitrary, but often used way to distinguish different ethnic people, some of fair skin complexion, some of dark skin complexion, in different geographical regions, depending on the context of the circumstance and situation. Now, on to our presentation. Are Haitians descendants of the biblical Israelites, such as the famous Haitian general Toussaint Louverture? Or are they members of the various African ethnic tribes who are themselves descendants of the children of Mizraim, Egyptians, Northwest, Southeast, Central, and South Africans, or Put, North Africans, North, Northwest, and Central Africans, or Kush, Ethiopians, East, Central, and Southeast Africans, or Canaan, West, Southwest, Central, and South Central Africans. Are Haitians Israelites of communities of Jews living or exiled into Africa who intermarried with African ethnic families who became enslaved during the transatlantic slave trade? Or are they the children of various ethnic tribes of Africa who became enslaved during the transatlantic slave trade? Francois-Dominique Toussaint Louverture, also known as Toussaint Louverture or Toussaint Breda, the 20th of May, 1743 through 7th April, 1803, was a Haitian general and the most prominent leader of the Haitian Revolution. During his life, Louverture first fought and allied with Spanish forces against Saint-Domingue, royalist, then joint with Republican France, becoming governor general for life of Saint-Domingue, and lastly, fought against Bonaparte's Republican troops. As a revolutionary leader, Louverture displayed military and political acumen that helped transform the fledgling slave rebellion into a revolutionary movement. Along with Jean-Jacques Dassoulins, Louverture is now known as one of the fathers of Haiti. Haitian Revolution The Haitian Revolution was a successful insurrection by self-liberated slaves against French colonial rule and Saint-Domini, now the sovereign state of Haiti. Captain Marcus Rainsford, in conversation with a Haitian soldier, 1805. Captain Marcus Rainsford, circa 1758 to the 4th of November, 1817, was a British army officer who fought in the Battle of Camden in 1780 during the American Revolutionary War. He published an historical account of the Black Empire of Haiti, 
London, in 1805. The Republic of Haiti Haiti, officially the Republic of Haiti, is a country on the island of Hispaniola in the Caribbean Sea, east of Cuba and Jamaica, and south of the Bahamas. It occupies the western three-eighths of the island, which it shares with the Dominican Republic. Haiti is the third largest country in the Caribbean, and with an estimated population of 11.4 million, is the most populous Caribbean country. The capital and largest city is Port-au-Prince. Haiti comes from the indigenous Taino language. It means land of high mountains. It was the native name for the entire island of Hispaniola. The name was restored by Jean-Jacques Dessalines as the official name of independent San Dominique as a tribute to the Amer Indian predecessors. Blair Nows, Ni Mary Blair Rice, 1880 to 1959, was an American novelist and travel writer. She was a founding member of the Society of Women Geographers. Black Haiti, a biography of Africa's eldest daughter, Blair Nows and Robert Niles. Blair Niles co-authored Black Haiti with her husband, Robert Niles. Book Overview Black Haiti, a biography of Africa's eldest daughter, is a comprehensive account of the history and culture of Haiti, the first independent black republic in the world. Written by Blair Niles, an American novelist and travel writer, who spent time in Haiti during the early 20th century. The book explores the complex social, political, and economic factors that contributed to Haiti's unique identity and its struggles to maintain its independence in the face of colonialism and imperialism. The book begins with a detailed overview of Haiti's African roots, tracing the history of the island's indigenous peoples and the arrival of African slaves during the colonial period. Niles then delves into the Haitian Revolution, a pivotal moment in world history that saw slaves rise up against their French oppressors and establish the first black-led republic in the world. She also examines the role of key figures in Haitian history, such as Toussaint Louverture and Jean-Jacques Dessalines, and the impact of their leadership on the country's development. In addition to its historical content, Black Haiti also provides a vivid portrait of Haitian culture, including its music, art, religion, and cuisine. Niles describes the vibrant street life of Port-au-Prince, the country's capital, and the unique blend of African, European, and indigenous influence that have shaped Haitian culture over the centuries. Overall, Black Haiti a biography of Africa's eldest daughter, is a rich and informative account of one of the most fascinating countries in the world. It offers a nuanced perspective on Haiti's complex history and culture and sheds light on the ongoing struggles faced by this resilient and resilient nation. This scarce antiquarian book is a facsimile reprint of the old original and may contain some imperfections such as library marks and notations. Because we believe this work is culturally important, we have made it available as part of our commitment for protecting, preserving, and promoting the world's literature in affordable, high-quality, modern editions that are true to their original work. The slaves imported from Africa had come from the Gold Coast, the Ivory Coast of Angola, and the Slave Coast, all the way from the Gulf of Guinea to the Cape of Good Hope. They represented most of the tribes of that dark and mysterious continent. Some were said to be descendants of Jews mixed with Negroes. These were tall, well-built men whose features had a Caucasian cast 
and whose language was clearly Semitic in character. Universal Center for Renovation, where the word is made flesh, presents historical and biblical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary, a biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. Indians and Ethiopians of Ancient Israel, Part 3. So, in the book Black Haiti by Blair Niles, we have read an account of the ethnic composition of the enslaved brought into Haiti during the transatlantic slave trade. They were Jews. These particular communities of Israelites, or Jews, were members of the southern kingdom of Judah. Hebrewisms of West Africa, from Nile to Niger with the Jews, is an historical base account of the population of Haiti, written by a member of the Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuits, Joseph J. Williams. In the section entitled Haiti, as a matter of fact, Hebrewisms of Africa derivation are not confined to Jamaica among the West Indian islands. Blair Niles, in her recent delightful little volume, Black Haiti, speaking of the slaves from Africa, positively asserts some were said to be descendants of Jews mixed with Negroes. These were tall, well-built men whose features had a Caucasian cast and whose language was clearly Semitic in character. Dr. Price Morris, whom she quotes as an authority, also claims a distant Semitic infiltration in the antecedents of some of the San Domingo slaves. Jews mixed with Negroes. Jews mixed with Negroes is an attempt by Niles influenced by the new school of scientific racism in racial geography to describe and distinguish the dark complexioned Shemitic Jews from the other dark complexioned Hamitic ethnic groups residing in Africa. This idea can be demonstrated by looking at the genetic makeup of the average black American population. Average Ancestry of the African American Population by Racial Ethnic Category Native American 1%, Other 2%, European 22%, Sub-Saharan African 74%. Black Demographics, blackdemographics.com Source, calculated by blackdemographics.com using the average of five genealogical DNA testing research companies, as cited by Henry Louis Gates Jr. Article, Exactly How Black is Black America? 2nd, 11th, 13th. Archaeological research will give us more insight into the meaning of the classification of the term Jews mixed with Negroes. The Oxford Encyclopedia of Archaeology in the Near East. The Oxford Encyclopedia of Archaeology in the Near East. Volume 3. The Southern Kingdom of Israel, 700 BC, Assyrian Relief, Hebrews in Captivity, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Page 320. Lachish. Assyrian conquest. The level 3 city was destroyed in 701 BCE by Sennacherib, king of Assyria. Campaigning in Judah, Sennacherib established his camp at Lachish. 2 Kings 18:14, 17. Isaiah 36 and 2, 37 and 8. 2 Chronicles 32 and 9. And from there, sent a task force 
to challenge King Hezekiah in Jerusalem. When the destruction of Lachish was complete, its inhabitants were deported. Starkey uncovered a mass burial, the scattered disarticulated skeletons of about 1,500 individuals in a few adjoining caves that may be associated with the Assyrian attack. D. L. Riston, 1939, has studied 695 skulls belonging to men, women, and children. Three had been trepanned. Curiously, the crania bear a close racial resemblance to the contemporary population of Egypt. The Oxford Encyclopedia of Archaeology in the Near East, page 321. Southern Kingdom of Judah, Shemites, resembled the Egyptian population of Upper Egypt in 700 BC. Interestingly enough, the ethnic groups that made up the urban population of Egypt in 700 BC were native Egyptians, Ethiopians, Nubians, Libyans, and North Africans, Canaanites, Syrians, Arameans, Hittites, Japhites, Ishmaelites, Israelites, Edomites, Ammonites, Moabites. Trade and commerce, conflict, and administrative issues brought these nations to Egypt in 700 BC. The Ancient Black Hebrews, Volume 2, The Forensic Proof Simply Explained by Gert Mueller. Or, what was the genetic composition of the ancient biblical Israelites of the southern kingdom of Judah? This would make the Lachish people approximately 71.5% African and 28.5% European. This would make the Lachish people approximately 71.5% African and 28.5% European. The people of the city of Lachish, a Levite city, this was their genetic composition, according to Gerd Mueller. The Israelites of Lachish had a 71.5% African in a 28.5% European genetic composition, which is striking when compared with your average African American who has a genetic composition of 74% Sub-Saharan African and 22% European. This reveals that the Southern Kingdom of Judah's population resembles your modern African American population. Hybrid Hate Complations of anti-Semitism and anti-Black racism from the Renaissance to the Third Reich. Tudor Parfit. Quoting from Hybrid Hate. The Semites belong to the mulatto class, a transition stage between black and white. Frederick Rutzel, 1844-1904. The average black American, with a variation of between only 60% to 74% African composition, is on average considered a mulatto class Shemite. But why this information is not widely published is revealed on this page. However, in 1864, William Winwood Reed, 1838-1875, the son of an Oxfordshire squire, failed novelist and fairly intrepid explorer, who would come into our story again, visited West Africa and wrote about Jewish children who had been enslaved by the Portuguese and sent to colonize the island of St. Tomé. The Portuguese had provided all the unmarried males with the Negress, and together they had created a mixed race, some of whom had settled in Loango. Reed did not perceive anything specifically Jewish about this mixed race. He must have given the matter some thought. 
because he concluded that the disappearance of the Jewish element in his hybrid was something of a blessing, as far as Western interests in Africa were concerned. A Jewish-Negro hybrid, a union of the Jew and the Negro, would be, commercially speaking, dangerous to Christianity. What did he mean? One can only speculate. But perhaps he meant that an omegation of Jewish brain and Negro brawn would produce a human type superior to Europeans, and thus a danger to Western business and enterprise. This text is influenced with the language of scientific racism, or biological racism, and geographical racism, which was by then and has since become the lingua franca of science and religion of even our contemporary world. But if we understand that all the people he is referring to are people of color, then we realize he is talking about ethnic intermarriage. To sum it up, the Western European Jewish or Israelite communities intermarried with the West African Jewish or Israelite communities, and both communities intermarried with the West African Hemetic ethnic families. But that is not the most important point he is trying to make. The most important point he makes is that the existence of Jews of color or black Jews would pose a threat to the edifice of the entire social, political, economical, religious structure of the Western world's business interest and enterprise. Why? Because the Western world and its form of Christianity have been built off the concept that the fair-skinned appearance is superior to all others. What would happen if Jews were known to be people of color? What would happen if Jews were known to be black? You would have a dark-skinned person with a Jewish intellectualism, physical prowess, and strength, and spiritual perspective. And this was considered the most dangerous thing to the world. Jews mix with Negroes. This is the classification of the black Americans and the people of the transatlantic slave trade. West African Vudan. But Vudan is a Hamite or African cultural trait, right? The Lasados, literally the thrown out ones or the cast out ones, were settlers and colonizers of Portuguese origin in Senegambia, Cabo Verde, Guinea, Sierra Leone and other areas on the coast of West Africa. Many were Jews, often new Christians, escaping persecution from the Portuguese Inquisition. The coastal Lasados and their descendants constituted a new socio-cultural group that spoke Portuguese, dressed in European clothes, and lived in rectangular Portuguese-style houses with whitewashed walls and verandas. They also adopted local African customs, such as tattooing and scarification. Their religious beliefs were likewise a mix of Catholicism, West African Vudan, and ancestor worship. The Lasados, the Jews living in Africa, also practiced Vudan. The Igbo people are known to be a community of Jews in Africa. An Igbo man with facial marks of nobility known as Ichi. The coastal Lasados and their descendants constituted a new sociocultural group that spoke Portuguese, dressed in European clothes, and lived in rectangular Portuguese style houses with whitewashed walls and verandas. They also adopted local African customs, such as tattooing and scarification. Their religious beliefs were likewise a mix of Catholicism, West African Vudan, 
and ancestor worship. Leviticus verse 19 and 28, King James Version. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. This was a prohibition for the Israelites. They broke the laws before the exile. They broke the laws while in exile and still do unto this day. Tattoos are a popular trend today. Haiti is a Hebrew language word used by the indigenous or native Indians of the Caribbean, the northern kingdom of Israel. Christopher Columbus and the participation of the Jews in the Spanish and Portuguese discoveries. Meyer Kaiserling. In a passage concerning Francisco Roldan, he asserts that such names as Cuba and Haiti are Hebrew and that they were first applied by the earliest caciques, the chiefs or leaders, Kaysen, who discovered and peopled the islands. Francisco Roldan said the Indians spoke Hebrew. He was a Spanish colonial administrator. He was left as local governor of La Isla Bella, the first Spanish stable settlement and town in the Americas when Christopher Columbus returned to Spain from his second voyage. The Ten Tribes of Israel, historically identified with the Aborigines of the Western Hemisphere. Bartolome de las Casas was a Spanish clergyman, writer, and activist, best known for his work as an historian and social reformer. Fray Bartolome de las Casas, depicted as savior of the Indians in a later painting by Felix Parra. In a passage on Don Bartolomeu, La Casas. La Casas was firmly persuaded that the Indians were descended from the Hebrews. The words Loquela tua manifestum te fichil, in reference to the Mexicans and other Indian tribes, whom he took to be real Hebrews, deserve the most serious attention, because we have here the opinion of a person who was well acquainted with the Mexicans and Peruvians, and who proceeded to America immediately after its discovery by the Spaniards, spent there the greater part of a long life and solemnly recorded in a testamentary document his conviction of a fact which he might have had many reasons for not choosing to divulge. Las Casas even goes so far as to say that the language of the island of San Domingo was corrupt Hebrew. What does loquela tua manifestum te fecil mean? La Casas was quoting Matthew, verse 2673. Loquela tua manifestum te fecil. Your words have made you manifest. Or your speech reveals you plainly. Meaning, I know you are the lost tribes because your Hebrew speech reveals you. He is well known for his account of what happened in the Caribbean in the first encounters between the northern kingdom of Israel, the Indians, and the Spanish Empire. A short account of the destruction of the Indies, Bartolome de las Casas. During the Renaissance period, hands were as important a focus of attention as the face was, because they were the only other visible area of the body. Hence, representation of the position of the hands 
became a decorative element that was almost as important as the face. Thus, given its high visibility, hand gestures in portraits and paintings have been one of the most effective ways of conveying secrets, codes, and messages. From the historical and religious perspective, hand signs and visual art may provide clues about the underlying iconographical symbols. Emperor Charles was a Hebrew. Charles V, 1500 to 1558. Habsburg, Holy Roman Emperor and King of Spain oversaw America's colonization. Treaties on the legal foundations of the Encomienda. The Hebrew tribe of Issachar, Mexicans, must pay tribute. The front piece of the book Treaties on the Legal Foundation of the Encomienda used symbolic language that explained the Mexicans were the tribe of Issachar of Israel, and they were supposed to pay tribute to the Spanish Empire. This knowledge was disseminated among the highest circles in Europe. In the next episode, we will show the symbols and secret meaning behind this symbolic artwork. Indians and Ethiopians of Ancient Israel, Part 3 More to come!